Hello everyone, this is Sheila Shafi and welcome back to Process Arc where we provide you with digestible business insights. In today's video, we're going to continue our discussion around metrics. Now metrics are irreplaceable in the business. Without them, it's very difficult to know exactly which way we're heading and we're doing nothing but exposing ourselves to chance and luck to make sure that we're going to actually hit the performance targets that have been given to us or the financial targets that have been given to us. So instead of just leaving it up to chance, let's start measuring things. And in today's video, we're going to go to metric number two, which is percent rework. And I'm going to highlight for you what exactly percent rework is all about, how do you measure it, and then with an example, provide you with a sample set of calculations. But before we dive into percent rework, I just want to have one final thought or note on the entire topic of metrics, which is that what we're going to be talking about, the top five metrics, is by no means an all-encompassing list of metrics. The world of business is really complicated and every business unit has its own nuances. And so there is a much bigger universe of metrics out there that we as business owners and executives need to be cognizant of when it comes to measuring performance. So these five are purely, think of them as the 101 metrics for process performance. But as long as we have an understanding that all business metrics need to tie back to either cost, revenue, or customer experience or customer satisfaction, we should be in good shape. So. Without further ado, let's jump into metric number two, which is percent rework. And in this one, I wanted to provide you with a process map to start the conversation. Let's dive in. So here's a very high level process map that outlines the client journey from the time that they're a prospect all the way to the point where they're onboarded. And you may notice that there are three distinct milestones in this journey. The first milestone has to do with the financial rep being able to develop a proposal and get the client to accept it, and then ultimately completing an application and submitting it for processing. Then the operation team takes over to make sure that they have everything they need so that they can process that request and get it imaged in their doc management system. And then a different department, one that once that's done, picks it up to generate and assemble a welcome kit. And ultimately, now it's in the hands of the customer to determine if they got everything they needed and all the services that they asked for, they've been signed up. So what you will see from a rework perspective, which is very important to us, is that we have a couple of points in the process where things, it looks like, are not going as we had anticipated, which means that in this situation, 65% of the time, the customer did not accept the proposal that the financial rep provided here, 45% of the time, the packet that the financial rep submitted to the operations team was not deemed complete. So the process essentially came to a stop. The packet was sent back to the financial rep in order for it to be completed. And one last point in the process where things again came to a halt or resulted in recontacting of a financial rep was right here when roughly 10% of the time the client felt like they did not get everything that they had anticipated in that packet. Every time the process comes to a stop or it does not proceed as was anticipated or hoped or designed, that by definition means you're going to end up with some rework. So let's now define what rework means. Rework is actually a pretty dirty word when it comes to process performance because by definition it means that we have to stop the process or we have to allocate resources to correcting a defect, a mistake, an issue that has arisen in the process. So it has everything to do with a correction and anytime you see the word or the prefix re, rework, redefine, revisit, reissue. That means that what we were supposed to do right the first time didn't quite happen that way. So rework by definition is a non-value add activity, which means that it's gonna cost us more to perhaps issue an application or complete processing of an application. It ultimately doesn't increase the value or the profitability of that product for us. It chokes the process, meaning that it stops us from being able to process something right and first time. It means we have to stop, correct, and then re 
issue or restart the process in order for us to complete the processing of an application or whatever it may be. So by definition, rework is really important for us to understand and measure because it's costs that we're embedding in the process, in the service, in the product that ultimately gets us nowhere and increases the likelihood of us not being able to process something on time. So it impacts costs and it impacts cycle time. Because again, remember, you have to stop to correct it or wait for additional information to come in in order for us to complete our work. Now, let's go to an example where we can now apply the mathematical calculations. So again, remember percent rework is like junk. It's just the amount of junk that now we have to deal with. So the mathematical calculation is one minus whatever you got out of the process divided by whatever you put into the process. So I put in 100 applications and only 45 of them came out without me having to recontact somebody or correct an error or maybe resequence the paperwork I got so that it gets imaged properly. Every time you cannot process something as you should correctly the first time, Every time you stop, it means you reworked it. And then you multiply it by 100% to get the percent rework value for that process. Now let's go back to the process map where we had the financial rep submitting roughly 100 proposals to its prospective clients and only 35 of those clients would accept the proposal. So either out of that 65 that was left over, either some clients ultimately decide to leave and go with a competitor, or they may ask the financial rep to listen to them better, or perhaps they explain their situation better to the financial rep, in which case they will have to redesign a proposal for them that better fits the prospective client's financial situation. In either way, the way to calculate percent rework is one minus the 35 that actually accepted the proposals as they were over the 100, which is what was submitted to the prospective clients, clients times 100%. And the ultimate number comes out to be 65%. So 65% of your customers are not accepting the work as the financial reps are proposing to clients. Now, all of these metrics can be used to answer a bigger question of like, who cares? Who cares if 65% of the customers lost or only 35% of the material that I put into the machine actually result in widgets? The ultimate reason we actually calculate any of these things have to do with the metrics that we talked about earlier on, which is revenue cost and customer experience. So let's talk about how to use that 65% now to calculate the material, the financial implications of a process that is performing at a 65% rework rate. So one way to use percent rework is to look at the incremental revenue loss. It's kind of a very close metric in this situation to percent conversion because we are looking at this metric on the sales side of the business, which is essentially the revenue generating side of the business. So if you have roughly 65% of your customers that are not coming back to you or not giving you a second chance to submit a proposal for them and you submit 800 proposals on a given year and you anticipate to get $29,000 of incremental revenue, or that's the level of profit associated with each customer, multiplying those three factors with one another gives you a sense of the incremental revenue opportunity that we have. Now again, this doesn't mean that I'm gonna be able to capture all 65% of it, but now we have a sense that the 65% equates to roughly $15 million of incremental revenue opportunities. So every percent inching upwards that we have, we have hundreds of thousands of dollars of opportunity to regain from a business perspective. Now it's time to question what do we need to do differently to recover some of that 65% lost opportunity. Now let's go to the other side of the scale, which is cost, and how do we use the 65% rework rate to associate a cost to the business? In this situation, we need four factors. You need the percent rework, 
we need the annual volume, we need to know the labor cost associated with this particular part in the process, which is proposal generation, and we need to know the amount of time allocated to this particular task. So again, we're back to 65% rework rate, roughly 800 is the annual volume of proposals, it's costing us $100 an hour between the financial rep and their assistant to actually generate a proposal, and it takes them four hours to do so. Multiplying all those factors ultimately gives us the final number, which is roughly around $200,000. Now again, you may not be able to capture all the revenue and all the cost back into the business, but this just gives you an example. This gives you an understanding of where the opportunities lie in terms of reduction of cause and increasing revenue and we will use the metric of percent rework for our next metric which is percent yield and I will explain that of course next week. So hopefully we have a deeper appreciation of why percent rework is important because it is robbing us of labor and our resources and adding cost back into the business without us being able to actually reap the fruits of the work that we have put into the business. So the more cognizant we are of what percent rework we have in every single business unit and every single milestone within the business, the deeper sense we have of what do we have to do in order to increase our efficiency and profitability, which ultimately has to do with revenue and cost. I hope you enjoyed this week's video. Please don't forget to subscribe. Leave your comments below. Would love to know if your business is measuring percent rework and how mathematically you've gone about doing that. And I look forward to seeing you again next week.